each time because I've not done a reading ASMR for a while and uh, I thought it's time I do another one uh, in case you didn't know already this is an ASMR so we've got our book Far Cry Absolution and I'm just opening the page I've taken the cover off easier to hold and now we will continue from where we left off last video I did notice in the last video my reading wasn't uh, at times it wasn't very clear because I'm whispering so I will try my best to make it uh, to be clearer as I'm reading so uh, see how it goes Right, so let's continue from where we left off. Keeping back from the ledge a little, he found a shadow bit of rock and putting the rifle on the 40 or so people that danced a circle below. He flipped up the scope cover and began to roam his eye across those below. Many were Sorry, many wore the white robes of the church. He ran the scope from the bearded faces of men to the unkempt flowing hair of the women. He watched not just them, but the elongated shadows of their movements, the shadows of legs and arms cast across the fairy ground like some sort of transforming fried creature half beast and half man by the time he had run the scope all the way around the circle they were forming into a line that stretched from the burning pile of wood down toward the river taking his eye from the scope he moved forward on his elbows until he was at the edge of the cliff he researched, sorry, he reached back, brought up the rifle, and, careful not to let the lights catch them, the glass lens, he looked down on the figure of the father, then in the river, forty, forty some years old, he wore the same unmoving face that could be terror or salvation to any who looked upon it. The man stood knee deep in the water in his own robe. The water clung to the material and climbed its way up to his chest where he hung from him and showed the strong musculature of his body. He chanted and looked to the heavens and one at a time he invited each worshipper to come in to so to come to him as he dipped them into the river and held them there watching as their arms flared for some sort of purchase. After all that after all had been baptized a new group was gathered. Some in robes many in their own clothes, brought huddled together from out of the shadows, some shivering, some visibly frightened. All of them led by men carrying guns and several with machetes. As they walked, the rest of the willing in their baptismal robes closed in. Behind them, encircling them there on the shore. Out of this group holding a large revolver was John Seed, the younger brother of the father. Slight in build, but cut from the same clove. Both bearded and tattooed, and both with those all-seeing eyes that seemed to search through the dark kind of nocturnal paras. <clears throat> With the revolver John went in 
cannot we and we alone have been chosen to survive this calamity and rebuild we are all angels and we few are set on a path back to the garden we are a family I am your father you are my children and together we will march to Eden's gates the morning mist was in the fields beyond when Will came to the top of the small rise and looked down upon the Kershaw house the grassy vehicle odour of the cattle lingered in the air he ran his eyes out along the cattle wire until it dropped away over the edge of the rounded field. A slim line of wood smoke escaped the chimney top and to this too he watched. Moving now, following the gravel road that ran the top of the hill, he came down through sand stands of pine and could see the barn below. One of the broad doors sorry, one of the broad doors stood open. Its lowermost corner resting in the dirt. Dark shadows seen within and though he could smell the cows in the air he had not seen one and he stepped closer, wondering now what had happened and whether the bear had come in again, and would now emerge from within the greater shadow covered in the fresh blood of some new slaughter. He found nothing of the sort, simply A and the chipped plates of the stores. and animals long vacated from this place. When he came out again he saw the white church truck parked off the road, closer to the pine forest than to the house. A shovel and a pick had been leaned against the side of the bed with two yellow cowhide gloves resting of each pole. Like the cook's come beginnings of some makeshift pair of scarecrows. Fifty yards away the opening of the screen door startled well. He turned and looked toward the porch where Lonnie and now waited, dragging his fingers, his beard and looking across the grass and gravel to well. When Will walked up, Lonnie had already taken his pouch from one of his pockets and had begun to roll a cigarette. He stood atop eat the he stood atop the porch. He wore a thin cotton tank that clung tight around his rib cage all the way to the waist of his trousers. His hair was mussed and on the skin of his face were visible imprints of sleep. He spat and then wet his lips and he watched well where he stood with the beavers on a string over one shoulder and the rifle on the other. Are you sleeping here? Will asked. Sometimes. Will watched him rummage through his pockets and then bring up the lighter. Lonely cupped the lighter and brought the flame to his lips. The cigarettes flowered and the first draught of smoke was taken down within his lungs. All of it seen in a kind of deliberate and slow cathesis. Smoke in air, the shift of a breeze, the washing of the smoke across his skin, the smell of the smoke coming linked with the smell of the cows. 
precious. Come, come. Loni was smiling a little bit, watching well, and then he learned. He leaned and spat again, not even buffing to get the spittle off the porch. Well, left the beavers on the kitchen counter and went to use the bathroom. When he was done, he came back into the small hallway that ran out from the living room. His hands were wet from washing them in the sink, and he ran his palms down his shirt from then flipped. Sorry, then flipped them over and ran the backs against the material, drying them on one side at a time like the dropping of a razor across the leather of a belt. Across the hallway was a part partly closed bedroom door and he pushed it open and looked within. A queen sized bed, the sheets pulled it open on each side. Two pillows and the indents of two heads, as if whoever had been there had simply risen minutes before and now was out walking the field or waiting on the coffee to finish recollecting. He turned and went further down the hallway, moving away from the kitchen and living room. He came to two more bedrooms, pushed each door open in turn and glanced inside. In one, blue walls and the hanging models of airplanes, built from some skits. In the other, pink walls and a dresser lined along its top with stuffed animals and small plastic toy horses. Many toppled over, but some still standing in various play poses of action like a thousand moments captured by a child's drama. I heard you had a daughter, Lonnie stood at the head of the hallway, thirty paces away. You heard, that's what they told me, that's what they said when they gave me the job of watching over you. Well, talking the pink colour of the walls, the diffuse curtains across a single window. He'd had a daughter, he had a wife, a family. Well, had had a whole life before this one. And it was the, his fault his wife and daughter were not with him anymore. So we are going to 